Hello friends, welcome to Awaken the Heart. I am your host Jennifer Martin and to find out more about me you can go to contagiouslove.com. That is the website for my husband and I where you can find events and blogs and videos, everything about us there. Uh, where we'll be, and of course, more information of how to partner with us. If these sessions bless you and you want to partner with us, you can go there and find out how you can give one time, or there are links where you can join to be monthly partners. Hello, everybody jumping on live. Today is going to be a wonderful day. God is handing us a gift for the year 2020. And before I get into it, I feel the river of God just welling up inside of me right now, and I really believe that he is going to share his heart with us on this session today. So I want you guys to, um, I want you guys to share this and get people on here um, to be part of this. So um, I had a dream last night, and I'm going to share a little bit about this dream and uh, what God handed me in the dream. And I'm just going to give some people some time to get on. So I want to enter into prayer and I want to say hello to you. I see some of my friends that I recognize. Joshua, I see you. You're always on these sessions. Thank you for being on here. Elaine, God bless you, Elaine. I always see you on here. Thank you for jumping on. You are such a blessing to me. Elaine recently just blessed my heart so much. She let me know how much these sessions mean to her, and a lot of you guys have done that too. And I want to welcome you guys, though, to send me messages when things bless you or you have a testimony or a healing. You know, message me and let me know how these sessions are blessing you, okay? Because I love to hear from, from you guys. I love to hear it. So let's get into prayer. And yes, please tell me hello and where you're watching from, but let's pray. The Holy Spirit is here already. I feel Him. I feel him so tenderly right now, and I know this is going to be a sweet message. God, you are handing us a gift in the year 2020, and Lord, I thank you right now. We just want to honor, Father, the things that you've shown us and those that have gone before us, and, and Lord, the great cloud of witnesses right now. I just want to honor, Father, those that have labored and toiled the ground, Lord, that have sowed prayer and that have sown prophecy, Lord, that, that sowed their lives, Lord, and laid down their lives for you. Lord, I just want to honor right now those that have gone before us and they've laid the groundwork and they sowed the seeds and they prophesied your word and they stood faithful through the test. They stood faithful through the, through the persecution. Lord, like, like, the, like Bob Jones, your prophet that you chose even from a young age. And Lord, he prophesied things that came to pass. And people call, called him crazy when he prophesied things that he said. But Lord, they were right and they came to pass. And we're seeing more of his prophecies come to pass today. And guys, we're going to talk about what Bob Jones uh, talked about for 2020. And the Lord confirmed it last night in a dream. And the Lord... Lord, you showed Bob Jones that 2020 was going to be the rest of God, about the people of God entering into the rest of God. There is a gift being handed to us for 2020, guys. You want to know why it's been hard and why it's been, you know, struggling and the warfare, and it seems like maybe it, it increased in intensity. It seems like just to struggle to enter into your rest has been difficult right now. I want to tell you, that the enemy knows his time is short, guys, and we are about to enter into such a glory realm of rest, and the enemy can't stop it. Nothing can stop it. Don't let the enemy's bombardment of persecution and trials and error cause you to be distracted right now or to think that there's some kind of illusion and strong attack that's going to take you out in this time. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You guys are going to enter into such a blessing and realm of glory and peace. I feel it all over me right now. You guys are going to enter into the rest of God because you believe the word of God. Okay, Bob Jones, go read the word for word. I don't have it printed out in front of me. I wish that I did. He said, that the warfare is not even going to be warfare in 2020. You, he said that the spiritual warfare is literally going to be like nothing. He said, for the enemy will not be able to affect the people of God who have entered into the rest of God. 
And guys, he said the 2010s, which is what we're in right now, we're finishing out the 2010s, we're in 2019. He said that was going to be the people of God learning the faith of God. Not just having faith in God, but having the faith of God. And have we not seen that? Have we not seen the ministers of God and the people of God rising up in the faith of God, feeling like we really believe in miracles. We really believe in the impossible. We are literally moving with his faith through us. And this happens like when I'm preaching and when Bunny and I are preaching. This happens, you know, with the faith of God will come upon me and I will believe for a miracle. And it's like, I know that miracle is going to happen. And it's not me stirring up faith in myself. It's not me having to believe or stir or convince myself to believe. It's literally the faith of God coming. It's like a spirit of faith that comes and it imparts to me. And I pray for that person and I see the miracle happen because I know that God is going to do it. It's like the spirit of faith that Smith Wigglesworth, off, you know, what he operated in. He had the faith of God because he was so close to the Lord. You know, and Lester Sumrall, who was mentored, he, he was mentored by Smith Wigglesworth. You know, he was a son of Smith Wigglesworth. And Lester Sumrall, he said... Um, he said that faith is simply knowing God. Faith is simply knowing God. And in this season, guys, we have learned to know him. Have we not been called closer to his heart? Has awakened the heart not done this for us? We've been called closer to him. We feel him. We sense him. We know him intimately. We're diving deeper into his love and his heart. And something is happening in the body of Christ. We're being stirred. We're being awakened. The fire of his love and his compassion is overflowing and it's filling us and something is happening where we're literally, because we understand how much he loves us, we are entering into such a strong foundational faith of trust and love that in 2020, we're going to be mature sons and daughters of God that are going to walk in his rest. Okay, let me talk about the dream I had last night that is confirming this. So in the dream last night, I saw... Um, if you don't know who Bob Jones is, you can just type in Bob Jones Prophet online and you can find videos by him, okay? But uh, last night, I went into a dream and I, I was back in time, guys. I was back in time. I was back in time in the year 2009. Some of you, that may have been a significant year in the spirit. It was a significant year in the spirit for Monday and I, but without going to all the details of what that means, I went back in time and I visited a man I walked up to a man. I did not know who he was, but he was a, a very wise, gentle man. He, I was, you know, felt safe with him. I felt like, you know, I knew him. I could trust him. He turned around and he was working on something. And he turned around and looked at me as if he noticed me and he realized, you know, oh, yeah, hi, it's you, you know. Like, but I just, he didn't say anything. He just, it was on his face. And he looked at me. He goes, here you go. And he turned back around to what he was working on and he grabbed a package. He grabbed a gift. And I saw when he grabbed it, it was this white box, not very large. It's this white box. And on it, there were these large letters and it said R-E-S-T. Rest. He handed it to me. He handed me rest. Rest. As if it was something I would take out of the box, like a, like a tea bag, you know? It's like something that, or a supplement. It's like it had rest inside this box, and he was giving it to me as a gift. He's like, here you go. And, I, and then as I looked at the box, it was really interesting, because as I looked at the box, it turned into um, measurement tape. Now, I'm still working through a lot of this meaning and symbolism. Some of you guys can probably help me out here. You might hear something from the Lord, and I welcome your interpretations. Because we're a family, that's what we do. So, there was measurement tape on there for somebody who is pregnant. Like when they measure the belly. The tape that goes around the belly, you know, to measure how big the belly is. And I looked at it, and I said... What is this for? I'm talking to the man. I said, I can't have a baby. I'm too old to have a baby. Why would I need measurement tape? And he said, oh, it's not for now. He said, it's for the future. Now remember, I'm in the year 2009. I had actually just had a baby at that time in the year 2009. 
But in the dream, I was feeling that I was my age right now. And I said, in the dream, I even was reminded of Sarah in the dream, thinking, I don't want to be like Sarah and laugh at the promises of God, right? So I was thinking, I'm too old. You know, I was telling him, I'm too old. I can't have a baby. But then the memory of Sarah and her story came up in my spirit. And I thought, well, I don't want to be like Sarah right now. What if God does have something for me in my future? What if he does have a child? I need to believe him for the impossible. I need to believe him for something that doesn't seem like it could happen. And remember, he said, it's not for now. It's for the future. This box that had rest written on it and then turned into a measuring tape, a measuring tool for a baby coming forth. Now, I believe that's symbolic spiritually for something that the Lord is birthing in the body of Christ and that a baby is coming forth because you guys know that when I have dreams, they're usually for all of us and not just me. I believe I'm going to enter into this season of rest, that rest has been given to me. And interestingly enough, today, I have felt the rest of God all over me, even though I'm busy. I'm doing lots of things, but I feel a rest and then I said, Lord, you prophesied through Bob Jones. You showed him that in the 2020s, we were going to be the people of rest. We were going to enter the rest of God. Now, let's read what that is in the Bible. Okay, we're going to continue talking about this. And I'm not going to keep you guys long today. We're going to pray through this. And we're going to enter We're going to enter into this supernaturally because it's a gift. God handed it to me through that man. I believe it's the Father. I really do because he was so gentle and sweet. And I've seen him in other dreams an older gentleman, you know, with gray hair, very calm and sweet and a sweet face. But he never tells me who he is. I don't know if he's like my angel or the angel of the Lord or if he's the Father. He never tells me who he is, but I know that he's kind and compassionate and that he's connected to the Lord and he brings me these messages and dreams. So, and I see you guys putting up some comments about the dream and I'm going to go back and read those too. Um, but I do believe that something is being birthed in the spirit in the body of Christ that we've carried it because he said it's not for now it's for the future but guys now we're in the future we're entering the rest could this be it could it be that the baby is coming now and that God implanted something in me in the year 2009 that I didn't know he had to go back and show me that he had handed me something that he was preparing me for in that year I have to go and chew on this it was a very significant year for Monday very significant year for us in ministry and I believe the Lord started something for us there, but it's time for the body of Christ. God has been preparing the bride and preparing the body to enter into the rest. It's time, guys. I believe this next year it's going to spark into the rest of God. And there's more than just the rest of God. We know the youth explosion is coming. We know the billion soul youth harvest is starting. We know it's the harvest of harvesters. We know the youth are exploding and they're going to be like the greatest evangelists that, that this generation's ever seen. We know that. we got to talk about that on a whole other session. But I want to focus on the rest of God and then we're going to pray into this. And I believe the Lord's supernaturally going to come and download this in our spirit. Let us be the ones that carry this rest so that we can give it to others. Okay? Okay, in Hebrews chapter 4, this is where it talks about the rest of God. It says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being less left us at, of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So today, guys, as we're speaking about this rest, we have to mix it with faith. That's why it's began to talk about faith. Interesting enough that God showed Bob Jones that the 2010s, this decade we're in right now, was going to be the faith in the people of God, the faith of God in the people of God. And without faith, you can't enter into rest. Isn't it interesting that first came the foundational faith being laid in the people of God, the spirit of faith in the 2010s, and now it's being matured in the sons and daughters of God. We are maturing in the faith this year. That's why this year may have been the most struggle for you in faith. Believe me, I know. Our faith has been tested. This year has been a struggling of faith. But it's all foundational, guys, because we're entering into the rest of God in 2020. God is handing us a gift of rest. It's going to happen. Receive it by faith, okay? So mix it with faith. That's what Hebrews 4 says. But to mix it with faith. 
for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. We're entering into the rest that Jesus has accomplished. There is no work that can cause you to enter into the rest or the peace or the resting place of God. There is nothing you can do. You can't pray hard enough. You can't fast hard enough. You can't, you can't do anything enough. You cannot do any works that causes you to enter into the rest. You must yield to the finished work from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Those that the gospel was preached to in the beginning, those that had the word of God preached to them, did not enter in because they did not believe the foundational work that Jesus had done on the cross was enough for them to enter into the rest and the promise of God. I feel the anointing. He's so sweet. Let me just take a minute and acknowledge him right now. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your sweetness on this word. I pray that everyone that jumps on this broadcast would just feel that sweet presence right now. Okay, Hebrews 4, 7. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, Today, if ye will hear my voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. Wow. Look at that. For he that is entered into his rest, he has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Does that mean not preaching the gospel, not doing anything, not going anywhere, just sitting on our couch waiting for Jesus to come back? No, that's not what that means. It means we're not working to be saved. We're not, we don't feel like we have to do good works and do good things for, for to be received into the rest of God. The rest, guys, is yours because Jesus already purchased it for you and you must find this place. You must receive this place. You must enter into this place of rest. It's a gift. It's a gift. The Spirit is a gift. It comes through the Holy Spirit. Love is a gift. Joy is a gift. Peace is a gift. These are all a gift by the Holy Spirit, guys. We cannot obtain it. We cannot work it up. We cannot make it happen. If we could do it, we would have never needed Jesus. We need to remind us of this every day. We need to tell ourselves this. We've got to believe on Jesus that He opened the way up for us to enter in to the rest. And then by faith, we need to enter into it. We need to cease from striving, trying to get good points with God or trying to get in God's favor. Listen, favor is already on you because you love Jesus, because you know Jesus. Favor comes upon Jesus. The favor is, is already on you as a son and daughter of God because you love Jesus. I feel that sweet anointing. Okay, we're, we're almost done and we're going to pray, okay? Let us labor, therefore. This is Hebrews 4.11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Guys, I'm telling you, people are being tested this year. People are being tested this year in their faith like they've never been tested before. I am telling you. I know it in the Spirit. I've been hearing people talking about it. I've been hearing people saying, why is this year so hard? Why does it seem like the warfare has increased? Why does it feel like there's such a test? I'm telling you, if we are not tested in our spirit of faith, it will not be worked in us. For the testing is what causes the strengthening of that faith muscle to become stronger, 
so that in the moment of temptation, in the moment of trials, when the next one comes, when the harder ones come, when the more intense trials come, your faith has already been worked out on the smaller trials and you've become stronger in your faith. So when something even scarier comes or harder to walk through comes, see your faith muscle, it's going to be so strong that you're going to be like, well, this is not too hard for God. Is anything too hard for our God? No, all things are possible with God. I've seen God do so many miracles. I know that he's going to do miracles in this situation too because you've already seen the goodness of God work in your life. You're going to know that his goodness is always going to work in your life. So your faith has been tested this year. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. But the outcome for you is going to be good fruits. You're going to have a lot of good fruit come forth in your life. The best one being... You're not going to be deceived. You're not going to be shaken. You're not going to be destroyed. You're not going to be cast down. That's why it's so important that we let these trials of our faith work in us. Let them work in you. Let them cause the patience to work in you so that you can truly enter into the rest because we know that God is working a good work in us and He's faithful and just to bring it to full completion, guys. We know that no matter what comes, God is our avenger. He said, I will avenge you of your adversary. God is our avenger. This is why we should lean back into the arms of Jesus and rest. This is why we can rest, guys. We don't have to fight a battle. Bob Jones saw it in 2020. He literally said the people of God were not even going to be engaging in warfare because they were going to be so strong in faith in God and have the faith of God that they were going to enter into this rest place that it's like, what? The enemy shooting arrows? I don't even feel them. I mean, it's literally going to be like that where the enemy won't even be able to cause a warfare against you because you're in such a strong place of faith and rest in the Lord. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Lest any man fall. You're not going to fall because you have faith. Okay. Verse 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Don't you just feel him? Just bask in that rest right now. This, he wants us to have this. This is what the session is for today. It's for you to enter into the rest of God. I saw God handing me that gift through his messenger in that dream. And on the pure white box was written one word, rest. And we're going to enter into the rest. It's given to us to enter in. And we're going to receive it by faith. And we're going to relax and just let all the pressure out. And just lean into the arms of Jesus. And truly let the Father in Jesus and the Holy Spirit reign over our life. And just, He has all authority and all dominion. He's your King. He's your Lord. He's over your life. Why don't we really rest in that? Why don't we strive so hard? Why don't we even strive so hard in warfare? We don't have to do that, guys. We can rest in the work that Jesus has done. He cast the enemy down. Let's not wrestle with someone who's already lost the battle. Come on. There's truth in this. There's truth in this. It's time for you to stand and know who your God is and not be tossed to and fro by every wind of the enemy's doctrine. He's trying to tell you he's got you pinned down. He's got you attacked. Oh, he's got you now. He's trying to put all these thoughts in your head and get you all crazy, making you think you're losing it or warfare's happening or this happening or fear trying to come on you and he's whispering all this stuff in your ears listen he's a defeated foe don't respond to him don't give him any place don't give him any room stand in jesus let's enter into the rest of god let's receive this gift that god's given us and let's really enter into this rest let's show him that we believe him by entering into the rest i'm going to do that with him i want you guys to do that with him there's a lot more to this that is so good. So the f last scripture I'm going to end with is Hebrews 4.16, and we're going to pray. We're going to enter into this. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy 
and find grace to help in time of need. Father, we thank you. Just lift your face. Lift your face to him right now. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we glorify your name. Lord, I thank you for encouraging me. That encouraged me last night, Lord, that you showed that to me, that you're giving me rest and that I can receive it by faith and that we have a good future ahead of us, that there are promises in our future. There's babies in our future. There's things being born in our future. There's things being birthed in our future. There's things being birthed in the children of God, in the sons of God. There are things coming forth that has not even come to fruition yet. We are going to see it. We're going to carry it. We're going to see it come even as we rest in the Lord. Even as we rest in the Lord, we are going to, to do things that would seem that we would need effort that would seem that we would need striving and struggling and, and pressing and pushing and pursuing. It would seem that we would need to do that to birth these things, but there's going to be such an ease in the rest of God, such an ease in the glory of God. There's going to be such an ease, guys, and these things, they're going to become born out of rest. Fruit is being birthed out of rest. Your calling is coming forth out of rest. The fruits of the Spirit are going to manifest in us out of rest. So, Father, I thank you for that right now. And, Lord, I just ask for that spirit of rest as you gave it to me in that dream. I thank you, Lord, that it's happening in the Spirit right now for the whole body of Christ. And, Lord, we say that we receive it. We receive you. We receive the gift of rest. And, Lord, we want to be that people of rest that you showed your prophet Bob Jones that would enter into such a rest. And he even saw that there had never been a generation ever before that had entered into your rest exactly like you wanted them to. He said, God has always wanted a people of rest, but no generation has ever entered into it. Even though they've tried, they've wanted to, but they've, they've never truly entered into what real rest is. And he said, this generation in 2020, that's us guys are going to enter into the rest. They are truly going to be this generation that God has been waiting for. That would be a people of His rest. That we rest in the Lord. That we trust in the Lord in all of our ways. And we lean not into our own understanding, but in all of our ways we're going to acknowledge Him. And He's going to direct our paths. There's going to be such an ease in the glory such an ease in the rest. We're going to be a people of power, a people of faith, a people of miracles, a people of healings, people of signs and wonders, and carrying the glory in the presence of God. His presence is going to be strong upon His people, and they are going to walk in this power, in this rest, in Jesus' name. Father, just release that right now upon all of the people that watch this, even on the replay. I just pray for you guys that the rest of God would enter into you right now, starting this moment, starting this day. Father, by your anointing. Lord, you said your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So Lord, release your yoke right now upon everyone watching. Your yoke, Lord, your anointing that destroys every other yoke of the enemy the ones that have been heavy laden, the ones that have worn down, the ones that have suffered under the pressures, Lord, of what the enemy has tried to bring them into. Lord, destroy that yoke right now by your anointing because only your anointing, Father, can destroy that yoke. Lord, send your Holy Spirit right now into each one watching and break off that spirit of heaviness that is a liar. Remove that yoke from around their neck and Lord, place upon your yoke, which is easy and light. Jesus, you said, come to me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's that simple. Come to Jesus today. Let him give you that rest. Supernaturally, you just put your hands out and you just receive it. With faith like a child, it's yours. You don't have to strive for it. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to plead for it. It's given to you in your hand right now. Father, just pray supernaturally right now that rest begins to come upon their hands and upon their heart. 
and upon their bodies right now that they would feel what rest feels like. You know, it feels like something. Lord, let them feel rest. All the striving break. All that struggling break. I command it to come out of their souls. I command it to come off of their physical body. I command it to come off of their mind right now. I loose them from it. I loose you from it right now in Jesus' name. And I bind you to the rest of God. He's going to hover over you like a dove. He's going to come and flutter upon you like a butterfly. This is what he wants. Close intimacy, trust, complete faith, hope, love, peace, joy, the rest of God. And you get to be in it forever for eternity. This rest. Don't you feel that right now? I feel that rest. Lord, thank you so much for reminding us that we as heirs, joint heirs with Christ, have a right to enter the rest. Thank you for reminding us. And Father, right now I'll always give you room to just touch your people. Right now if there's any physical ailments, depression, or any kind of thing that is not the work of the Holy Spirit in you right now I just release you from every work that is of the flesh that is of the enemy I release you from that and right now I just bring you into the work of the Holy Spirit Lord touch their bodies if there's any pains trauma, physical issues things you've been diagnosed with Father release your rest in that area right now and release your love in that area and set them free, Lord, from every physical problem, every disease, every trauma right now. Just break it in Jesus' name. Thank you. There goes the anointing right now just going through. You just put your hands out and just receive healing right now. Just receive it right now. Healing for, for your body, healing for your mind, and healing for your heart. All three completed work. Nothing missing, nothing broken. It's the shalom of God. Shalom means wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom over you right now. Lord, thank you for your presence. We saw so many miracles happen this last weekend in Pennsylvania. The sweet Holy Spirit, His presence just, just overtook us. Just keep receiving from the Lord while I'm talking to you. I just want to share this with you because this was something really strong that happened that I had not experienced to this degree in a service, in a meeting before. And the love of God baptized me and I went to pray for people. And as I stood in front of each person, the Lord suffered me not to pray or speak a word for quite some time. I would stand in front of them and as I stood in front of them, the presence of God would touch them the glory would come on them and they would begin to weep. And we stood together weeping, weeping in the love of God. I can't explain it in words. There's no way to explain it. It was such a beautiful presence. And I would move to the next one and I would just place my hand upon their shoulder and as I did, weeping would overtake them. And then I'd move to the next one. I'd put my hand on their shoulder and weeping would overtake them. And weeping would overtake me because God had come. And when his presence comes, you don't want to talk. There's no words. You don't need to say anything. His glory is all anyone needs and everything you need is in the glory. Just put your hands up in that glory right now. I just feel his presence as we're talking about him. Holy Spirit, we love you so much. Touch people change their lives. As you're being touched, if you're if you're receiving a healing and something's happened, I want you to check your body and tell me in the comments. Communicate to me. Tell me in the comments, what is the Lord doing? 
How has he healed your body? Has the pain left? Is the knot shrunk? Is the lump gone? Is the mobility back? Did you get new knees? Did you get new elbows? Did you get new shoulders? Did something happen in your head? Did something happen in your back, in your neck? I want you guys to check right now because the Lord will just begin to move in the atmosphere, even without me calling words of knowledge. He'll just start moving through the broadcast. The anointing will come on you. That yoke of the sickness breaks under the power of the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Whatever pain is in your body, it has to leave right now. It has to get out for the finished work of the cross has come upon you in Jesus' name. Jesus finished the work and he opened the way for us to enter into that rest. We should have no pains. We should have no sickness. We should have no problems in our bodies. Our bodies must come in line with the word of God. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how many years it's been. You know, that woman with the issue of blood had, was sick for 18 years and she could have gave up and could, she could have said, it's always been this way and I'll never be healed. There's no reason to try to go to this new spiritual heal, healer walking through town named Jesus. I might as well not go grab his hymn. I've been sick for 18 years. I've went to every doctor. Nobody's healed me. There's no way that anything's going to happen. Why would I even reach out to him? Let's not do that. Let's say, you know what? In a minute, in a second, Jesus can heal me right now. Even if you've prayed for it a million times, lift your hands again. And say, Jesus, you can heal me in a second. And I'm reaching out to you right now. And I thank you for what you did through the cross. And I thank you for the gift of salvation and the gift of healing. Right now, it's mine. It is free. It is a gift. I've inherited it. I've inherited wholeness. And it has to happen in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. And just let Holy Spirit move through you. Let Him move through you. Let Him touch you. Let His presence just overwhelm you right now. Everywhere where there's been hopelessness, Lord, you're just breaking hopelessness off right now. This word has refreshed so many of you. It felt like a fresh drink of water just going down into your spirit. And you feel so refreshed and cleansed on the inside because the Lord has literally poured living water into you. He's poured that living water all into you and something is happening right now as that living water pours out of you all into your your extremities all all the way to your tips of your fingers and the tips of your toes that living water flow and is bringing life to every cell right now life to every cell in your body every cell in your body lord release your glory in them right now in jesus name thank you lord you are amazing we love you so much. As things are happening, let me know in the comments. As healings are happening, let me know in the comments. Let me know what just happened. Check your bodies right now. Let me know what's happening. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Hallelujah. What am I in What am I in Take a minute, guys, and share this with people. People are going to need this word. They're going to need to hear about the rest of God. They're going to need to hear about that God has given this to them, and it's theirs, and they don't have to struggle and fight anymore. And the anointing is just going to come through this and touch people. Tag a friend in the comments. Let them know they need to hear this word. Share this. Let people hear this. And, guys, if you want to um, partner with our ministry, go to contagiouslove.intl.com. And you can give one time there or you can become a monthly partner. We would love to have you as a monthly partner. We would love to ask if some of you could consider becoming monthly partners for us because we're having uh, a big outreach thing and a big vision that the Lord's putting on our heart for our local region here. We're believing the Lord's going to move and that the anointing is going to move and signs and healings and wonders and revival is going to happen in our local area, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, all around this area. People are calling us, asking us to to come in and do Awaken the Heart sessions in their region and, and the presence of God, you know, seeing Him move in their region. And I'm getting blown away. People are just wanting us to come. They want us to do Awaken the Heart and and the Lord move. And um, I just am so thankful. I, I really am. I'm so thankful. I'm being blown away by the Lord. He's really enlarging uh, the territory. And I've been asking Him to bless Awaken the Heart and to enlarge it because I really feel like, you know, He has called it to the body of Christ. And, and He told me that. And I said, Lord, you know, enlarge the reach and get this this out to people. You know, if you've called me to reach the heart, Lord, you got to help me to reach the heart. you got to put me in the places so I can reach people's hearts, you know, that he can reach them through me. And uh, he's doing it, and I'm, I'm very humbled by it, and I'm very honored by it. And um, 
I just, I was blown away by the presence of God in Pennsylvania. And um, when I spoke, it was Saturday night. And, um, and I'm going to just say this and I'm going to let you guys go. But uh, the presence of God came so strong. The fire of God came on me so strong. And it, I was talking about the high praise word. You guys remember the high praise word that I released on, on here on one of my videos. It was last year, uh, no, earlier this year. Um, the high praises of God. It was uh, earlier, I think, in January of this year. Uh, and the Lord reminded me about that word. He said, remember about the high praise and release the high praise. And it was just beautiful. It was amazing. And, um, oh, hi. I'm almost done. And so um, we, uh, it was just amazing. There were so many uh, healings, signs, and wonders that happened and it was beautiful it was just powerful the presence of God came the anointing came and it was glorious I was I was overcome by consuming fire and um, I just I am so amazed at the Lord's presence I just want to share that with you guys that as you're sowing into these sessions um, that you are blessing so many people where we go and the Lord is using it and he's coming and his anointing is so precious so I can't say enough just thank you thank you thank you for helping us take the gospel taking his love everywhere and God bless you guys thank you for joining this has been so good today you guys share this and um, let people know share the word about uh, waking the heart if you want to waken the heart in your area please tell people um, you know even homes large home groups you know that can fit 30 to 50 people in a home I love those. Those are some of my favorite sessions. They're so intimate, and they're always really, really sweet and special. And the glory is so strong when we have intimate home gatherings. I don't know what it is about it. The Lord loves it. TL.com. Become partners with us. Message us there. Email us. Message me on Facebook or email us at info at contagiouslove.intl.com. And tell me your testimonies and tell me what the Lord did for you on the session. If you jumped on late and you got healed, tell me about it. Okay, I love you. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.